वेलकम टू महात्मा एजुकेशन सोसाइटीज ई लर्निंग चैनल दिस इज द एट्थ लेक्चर ऑफ अ सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर्स ऑन इंट्रोडक्शन टू मैकेनिकल वाइब्रेशन द आउटलाइन वी विल लुक एट रिकेपिटुलेशन ऑफ लेक्चर्स कवर्ड इन द लास्ट चैप्टर देन ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ द प्रेजेंट चैप्टर दैट इज फ्री एंड डैम्ड सिंगल डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम वाइब्रेशन सिस्टम्स एंड methods for formulation of differential equation or natural frequency the recap in the last lecture we had looked at the basic concepts of vibrations and there were a number of important concepts we covered notably what is meant by simple harmonic motion the reason why we saw this or we studied this simple harmonic motion is that most of the uh motions occurring in nature or in physical systems they closely approximate this type of motion right and then we looked at the rotating vector form of simple harmonic motion and we concluded that uh acceleration was leading the displacement by half cycle or 180 degrees and velocity was leading the displacement by 90 degrees and uh, this will be useful for the chapter of force vibration when we create the force vector polygon next we saw what are the three basic components of vibration system out of which the mass and the spring are compulsorily required for causing vibration if we remove any one of these we don't have any vibration and the third component is called as the damper for dissipating the energy in the form of heat thereby reducing the amplitude of motion significance of undamped natural frequency so why do we study this this is the single most important parameter in the study of vibrations why because if i have a forcing frequency for example motor speed matching with this undamped natural frequency then we have the concept of resonance and during resonance we have very large amplitudes set up in the system and this is a cause of failure because of large deformations there are large stresses set up and the stresses might be exceeding the permissible stresses in the systems then we saw frequencies there are two types one is circular and the other one is linear so we denote circular by omega radians per second and linear by linear frequency f that is cycles per second or hertz and we have omega is equal to 2 pi times f or f is equal to omega by 2 pi then as a design engineer we looked at the steps involved in the vibration analysis uh, we have the mathematical modeling where the real physical system is represented as a combination of spring mass and damper systems and uh, we can have uh, different degrees of freedom to start with the design engineer uh, constructs the crudest possible uh, representation and uh, we get the one value of omega n and advantage is that we get uh approximate range of the value of omega n in the minimum time possible then we slowly build up the complexity of the analysis and uh, the degree of freedom is increased and we stop uh, till a point where the computational costs or uh, calculations do not exceed right now to move over to the next uh, chapter uh, it is a free and damped single degree of freedom vibration systems the objectives to determine systems undamped natural frequency that is omega n or differential equation using different methods to find the response that is it is a displacement as a function of time so we call it as the solution of differential equation from the given initial conditions so x0 and x0 will be the given initial conditions now what are the different methods available for formulation of differential equation or to find the natural frequency the first one is the newton's equilibrium method it is based on second law of motion or we can make use of d alberts principle other methods that follow they are essentially the energy methods right in the first one we have uh, the conservative principle being applied that is the total energy remains constant right 
and based on that we take the time derivative of the total energy and which is not changing and thereby we get the differential equation. The second is the Rayleigh's method where we equate maximum potential energy to the maximum kinetic energy and then the third one is the equivalent system method where we are going to use this extensively. So, why we will look at shortly and the last one and the most powerful of all is the Lagrange's method. Now, Newton's equilibrium method let us take one uh, example of a spring mass system where I am having the spring let us say of some stiffness k and this is the empty platform where you are supposed to keep the mass right. So, let us say the position is called as the equilibrium position where the mass is supposed to be present ok. Then I am placing some mass gradually onto the empty platform and such that the center of gravity of the mass placed over here will be in this new position. I call this as the static equilibrium position corresponding to mass let us say it is mass 1 and again this is in equilibrium position it is not vibrating. Likewise, if you have any other mass placed over here gradually it will be occupying some new position that again will be static in nature right that is static equilibrium position corresponding to mass 2. Likewise, you are ha having n number of static equilibrium positions corresponding to different masses right. Now, whatever vibrations are going to occur will be about this static equilib equilibrium position ok something like this and I am going to measure the displacement as a function of time from this SEP right. So, basically many textbooks will say SEP is equivalent to EP only right. Now, uh, the spring length corresponding to this initial position is the free length of the spring and after placing mass m 1 the there is an extension of the spring by an amount equal to this value the amount displaced by the empty platform. So, we call it as the static deflection ok static deflection and uh, this mass being static in nature I can create a free body diagram of this mass and I can write one equation say let us call this as only m for now. So, m into acceleration due to gravity is the self weight acting downwards is equal to the upward force by virtue of the spring deformation that is k times delta h t ok. So, this is the static equilibrium equation right. Now, suppose that I have given some initial disturbance something like uh, initial displacement or initial velocity or both initial displacement and initial velocity. So, in either case I am having some energy induced in the system by virtue of kinetic energy or potential energy or both right. Assuming that let us say the center of gravity of this mass has been shifted to this new position over here and it is dynamic in nature dynamic means it is still moving right. So, let us create the free body diagram of this mass same mass when the CG is over here which and which is moving right. So, let me create a FVD right. So, it is m right. So, this distance is the displacement for time t right and let us try to show uh, all the forces on this particular mass which now is in motion. So, for anal analysis purpose what we can do is uh, we can convert this uh, mass in motion to be a mass at rest ok. We are trying to convert a e dynamic uh, system in terms of an equivalent static system uh, for our analysis purpose. So, due to the moment what is happening is I am having one additional force that is to be shown in the free body diagram that is the inertia force that is m x double dot. So, this is important here this is inertia force and not a uh, accelerating force. So, accelerating force is always equal to the inertia force, but pointed in the opposite direction that you have to remember here. So, for now I am just showing the inertia force that is m x double dot in the same direction as that of the displacement x. So, let us have a habit of showing the displacement velocity 
and acceleration all in the same direction of displacement and if I multiply acceleration with a, a mass I get the inertia force ok and apart from this I am having the self weight that is mg and over here I am having what is the total amount of deformation of the spring that is k times so this is the force here k times the deformation what is that so initially it was delta ht and now it is additional x the displacement of the mass from the scp so this is the force now this is the equivalent uh, what do you say uh, equivalent uh, system uh, i have converted the dynamic in terms of static body right and now i will again write the equilibrium equation so i'm having here i am imposing one law that is inertia force is equal to the summation of remaining forces in the direction of motion fine so basically you have to take this inertia force mx double dot equate this to the summation of remaining forces in the direction of motion so mg self weight is in the direction of motion therefore it is plus and k delta ht plus x is opposite to the direction of motion therefore minus so minus k delta ht plus x right so i am having here mx double dot is equal to so this mg will be cancelled out by k delta ht okay by virtue of this equation static equation and i am having minus k del kx so basically the self weight of the mass is cancelled out by the force coming out from the uh, static deflection of the spring henceforth when we are trying to uh, write the equations from the free body diagrams we will tend to omit this uh, self weight and the force coming out from the uh, static deformation right and from this i am having therefore mx double dot plus kx is equal to 0 this is the differential equation of motion for this mass now somebody may argue that sir why have you shown this over here in this direction so if you want to show the actual force in the proper direction that should be the mx double dot which will be called as accelerating force right so you can take this value of the force plus this self weight and this spring force and just equate the upward forces with the downward forces that is what you can do and basically you end up in the with the same equation fine so either you can use accelerating force pointed towards the mean and equate the upward and downward forces or you can show the inertia force that is the value equal to mx double dot same as accelerating force but it is pointed in the direction of the motion right so wherever x is there i will show x dot and i will show x double dot in the same direction and multiply this with m i will get the inertia force and then use this equation fine and basically both are same now from this equation let us divide it by m throughout i am having x double dot plus k by m x is equal to 0 this equation when i compare with the differential equation of simple harmonic motion it is something like this shm motion and you observe that both of these are very much similar in form hence i can say for the real system i am having the square of the natural frequency now for the real system is equal to k upon m or omega n is equal to root of k upon m radians per second and from this static equation i can also say that omega n is root of g by delta ht radians per second right so from this equation the next one i can say that just by knowing the value of just by knowing the value of delta ht and without setting the body in vibration mode still i can find the estimate of omega n okay now basically this uh, d alberts principle and uh, newton's method both are uh, quite equivalent right both are almost same uh, whereas uh, the newton's method states that uh, the inertia force is summation of all remaining forces in the direction of motion uh, the d alberts principle here says that the inertia force plus summation of the remaining forces should be equal to zero so basically i am taking this over here and which is nothing but the d alberts principle now so what remains is the uh, energy methods a number of these of different forms the first one is uh, the total energy 
for a conservative system that means there is no damper as such so it is equal to kinetic plus potential energy for any time instant is uh, constant or it is same right so what we do is we take derivative of total energy with time and make it equal to zero right so for our case i'm having uh, a total energy as so i will take here d by dt of half mv square that is kinetic energy and half kx square that is potential energy that is zero right so you have basically half times m times so it is derivative 2 times x dot times x double dot so plus half times k times 2 x into x, x dot is equal to 0 now you cancel out the common terms right and uh, x dot is also cancelled here I am having m x double dot plus k x is equal to 0 the same equation you are getting as earlier one right note that here after getting the values of kinetic energy potential energy you are required to do all these things right and uh, I would recommend that you do not proceed with this particular type of method why because you may skip this entirely and you may just need to find what is k and what is p e and straight away you can get the value of omega n uh, by using the other method called as the equivalent system method we will see it shortly. Now Rayleigh method it is a very special case of uh, energy method here uh, I compare the energy in the system at two different uh, positions one is when the mass is at its mean position and the other mass is at its extreme position right so at the mean position I am having the kinetic energy as maximum because we have maximum kinetic velocity right and whereas potential energy is zero right why because virtually there is no deformation from SCP right now in the extreme position kinetic energy is zero because mass is momentarily at rest changing its direction and uh, potential energy is maximum why because there is a maximum deformation of the spring right so I compare this position 1 and position 2 and because I know that addition of these two energies at any time is nothing but total energy and because it is a conservative system again I am talking about conservative system so I can say that this total energy should be equal to this total energy hence I can say safely that kinetic energy maximum is equal to P e maximum right and recall from the chapter number 1 uh, if I am writing uh, the displacement equation as a sin of omega t right so a is indicating the maximum displacement or the amplitude so in this case I can write here half times m times uh, velocity square so velocity amplitude is omega a square of that is equal to half times k times so maximum displacement uh, x max right so in that case it is a displacement amplitude so from this one you will get half and half cancelled out and a square a square is cancelled out I am having here omega square into m is equal to k or m omega is equal to under root of k by m right so here we are getting the value of omega straight away omega n uh, omega n first and then later on we can insert this in the differential equation right now uh, equivalent system method so let me define what is meant by equivalent system equivalent system is the simplest spring mass or damper system right without without damper so it is a system consisting of only one spring one damper may be there this may may or not be there and one mass so if i am talking about undamped vibrations then this is not there right so if I am uh, converting a real physical system in terms of this system okay this will be called as the equivalent uh, vibratory system having x as the coordinate I can also convert the real system okay in terms of a single shaft and disc or a rotor system having theta as the coordinate so this is kt equivalent and this is i equivalent so here I will call it as m equivalent and this is k equivalent okay or I can convert this in terms of torsional spring and a disc with theta over here so kt equivalent and i equivalent right so the real system may be having a combination of thetas and x there might be n number of masses each mass may be having pure motion of the cg it may be having combined combined motion also right so basically I have to deal with n number of coordinates 
right but i know that it is a single degree of freedom system as long as i can express one coordinate in terms of other co another coordinate right so i can use any one coordinate as a basic coordinate and uh, i can convert that real physical system in terms of a system like this having x as the basic coordinate or a system like this having theta as the basic coordinate so this basic coordinate is also called as the generalized coordinate and for the real system what i do is i write the kinetic energy equivalent as half times and after conversion of all the coordinates in terms of only one coordinate i will arrange in this particular form and here i have some number of terms and for pe equivalent i have something half into some value into x square so here also i will be having some number of terms and this k equivalent will be compared compared with the k sorry yeah this uh, uh what is a k for the real system will be compared with the k of the equivalent system okay so basically i'm talking about the uh, equivalent uh, translator system having x as a coordinate or i can convert in terms of a torsional coordinate in which case i will write it as half into something of theta dot square right so in that case i will be comparing with this system right so from this one you will be getting the value of this equivalent terms so i'll be getting m equivalent or i equivalent or here i'm getting k equivalent or i will be getting uh, half into something of theta square so this will be what kt equivalent so you are getting the equivalent system parameters over here and once you get equivalent system parameters you get the value of omega n straight away k equivalent upon m equivalent if you are using x as a coordinate or it is kt equivalent divided by i equivalent if it is a theta as the coordinate so the summation of kinetic and potential so as to get total energy then derivating the total energy with time equal to 0 and then cancelling out the terms and getting the differential equation and then getting what is the omega n value we are trying to neglect all these things by uh, just simply uh, comparing this real system with the equivalent system and getting the value of equivalent terms and straight away getting the value of omega n so it is that simple here right so we are going to use this particular method extensively which is being followed in all uh, major textbooks uh, something like shawn's outline series right now the most powerful of all the methods is the lagrange's energy method uh, so it is something like this d by dt of partial of the lagrangian operator l with respect to velocity minus d by or so partial with respect of uh, lagrangian with respect to x equal to 0 so this is for a uh, free undamped free undamped one degree of freedom vibration system now uh, this uh, equation can be modified so as to cover other aspects also so this method in uh, in general is valid for conservative as well as non conservative right it can be applied for this then it is for free vibrations and it can also be used for force vibrations it can be used for damped cases or undamped cases so it is most powerful of all uh, i have to make some small modifications over here if i am talking about uh, okay i am having a single degree multi degree also single degree of freedom and multi degree of freedom right so so conservative non conservative means i'm talking about damped and undamped right both are the same things uh, i have to associate each coordinate okay and i have to repeat this same equation number of times so as to get for single and multi degree of freedom systems and i can add some damping coefficient over here damping values over here qi okay if it is a damped case and uh, if i'm having a force vibrations then i have to include it over here f of t instead of 0 right so how this equation has been derived it is beyond the scope of our study so let us just focus on the utilization of this particular formula right and uh, only for one degree of freedom for the time being right so i'm having say for the spring mass system uh, the lagrangian operator is given by the difference in kinetic and potential energies so i will write it as half into m into x dot square minus half into k into x square so this is the lagrangian operator so i'm having d by dt of so if i insert this k and p over here or simply that right in terms of l right so what is the answer here so partial of l with respect to x dot 
So, it is half times m times 2 x dot. So, remember that there is no x double dot here because we are not derivating with respect to time, it is with respect to x dot, right. So, this is what is that and minus this one partial of L with respect to x i. So, it is uh, this particular term. So, I am having here minus half into k into what is that 2 x fine equal to 0. Now, you take the derivative of this. So, 2 and 2 are cancelled out. I am having mass into derivative of x dot with time is x double dot my plus k into this 2 2 are cancelled out x equal to 0. Right. So, basically I am having the same kind of differential equation. Okay. So, uh, you can use any of these uh, methods for uh, solving your numericals. It depends on the convenience and the ease with which you can solve the particular problem. Uh, this is all about uh, the methods for formulation of differential equation or to get the value of uh, undamped natural frequency. Uh, hope you have understood all the contents. Thank you.